Oh, what's what's your name? Ilona. Ilona. Okay, and you are a Christian. From Poland. From yes, Poland. I'm a Christian. Okay. Uh, Catholic or Protestant? I'm a Protestant. Yeah. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and He has died for me on the cross. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll come to that. Let's yeah. let's introduce me and resurrected. Yeah. Let's introduce uh, each other because I'm actually a Muslim, and uh, yeah. we come to Speakers Corner to have this uh, interreligious uh, dialogues, yeah. and uh, it's it's good if we talk to each other rather than to the camera because that way it's more natural, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> so. So what I'm saying is that uh, if uh, I believe most people in in Poland are Catholic, yeah. What uh, brought you towards Protestantism? You know, I come from uh, the family where I suffered a lot, and I was looking for the answer. I didn't have peace inside. I didn't have joy inside, and I met Christians. I went uh, okay. on a camp, children's camp. I was I was eleven and a half. Okay. Yeah, and they had some peace inside. They had the joy. Uh, I, I asked, what is, it, "What is it?" And they said, "It is Jesus Christ." And you know, when I prayed and asked God to uh, forgive my sins, that I told Him that I believe that He died for me and He resurrected, okay. and now He lives in heaven and He watches over me and He loves me. Unconditionally, like so. What happened yes. when you were 11 and a half? What what exactly happened? Did you go? Yes, I went to the Christian camp. Okay, when you say Christian, were they Catholics? Protestants. They were Protestants. Yeah. Your parents are Catholic. Yes, but I have. A so lot at yes. a young age, you left your Catholicism. Yeah. That is the reason I want to know what is it that made you leave? Because the Catholics for the Protestants. Because it is Christianity. Exactly. So why yeah. did you leave then? Because uh, Catholics base. Uh, a lot on the tradition. I like Catholics. I have nothing against them. I love them. I often pray with them as well. Yeah. They have holy uh, spirit inside themselves. So why did you leave that? That's the question I want to know. Because the thing is, if yeah. they if they are Christians, yeah. if they have the Holy Spirit like the way you have Holy Spirit, you know. So what is what is it that made you move away from the Catholics? Towards the Protestants. I want to Is at a young age, yeah. like eleven. Yeah. Yeah. I want to you know, it's you're yeah. still a child, basically. <laughs> I want to repeat it that I yeah. love uh, Catholics, and uh, many of them are very close to God. Okay. Only uh, I didn't want to base my faith on uh, the tradition. I only wanted to glorify God. I don't pray to any other figures or saints. Oh, I see. Okay. I don't pray to Mary, although she was a great woman and she gave birth to Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. Good. So you don't pray to any humans. Yeah. You pray only, to God. Yeah. You only to pray God to God. And Jesus Christ through right. the Holy Spirit. Okay. So let me ask you this. Yes. And you know? Yeah. If you yeah. pray only to God, yeah. who is your best role model? Is it Jesus Christ? Yeah. Yes. He's my hero. Good. So your hero prayed to whom? When he was a man. Whom did he pray to? When he lived on earth, yeah. he was talking with his father. Whom was he worshipping? Whom was he praying to? God. Who, which God? His father. God is in a uh, person. Is that in the Bible? The father God, yes. Jesus where? Christ and Holy Spirit. And, where, where in the Bible does it say that God manifests as three manifests. persons? I don't show know. me. Show, don't give me the exact uh, words. Paraphrase it for me. What do you remember from the Bible that says God is three persons? God, uh, through Jesus Christ. No, no, from the Bible. I don't remember the exact Bible verse. I'm not asking for the exact. Yeah. I said paraphrase it for me, for what you remember. Because you claim it's in the Bible. So give me something close to what you remember. That God manifests as three persons. Anywhere in the Bible. This is in Trinity. Uh, Jesus Christ and uh, God are one and they work through Holy Spirit who is also a person and you know uh, God So what makes them one? God, listen, I want to finish. Yeah. God uh, works on our character and he wants to work, uh, bring fruit uh, and it is peace, gentleness, faithfulness, joy it is in but that, that wasn't my question. I, yeah, I want I, you to understand I, I, the importance of what Jesus was doing. When Jesus was... Also, hear, me, hear the question yeah. first. When Jesus was on earth, you said he was your best hero, your yeah. role model, the perfect man and so on. Okay? Now, this perfect man, this role model, this hero of yours, recognized and worshipped a God. Yes. 
Did you worship one person or more than one person? He worshiped God. No, no. Answer were... the question. One person or more than one person? God is the spirit. I didn't ask you that. Okay. You said God manifests as three persons earlier. Yes. So based on that, I'm asking you, did Jesus he recognize God, God as one person? Yes, he glorified God. No, one person or more than one person? You know what I'm asking. You know, you know exactly. Person, Good. Thank you. But they were in Holy no, no, no. Spirit. Hold on, hold on. If Jesus recognized God as one person, yeah. then who are you, a Protestant or a Catholic, to say God is three persons? Because he is. You're going against Jesus. And Do you listen, realize that? Listen, and I have experienced Holy Spirit. No, no. Now you're getting. Things. Now you're using emotional. Listen, but I don't want only to ask. Semantics here. <laughs> I don't only want to answer you these questions because. I'm going based on what yes, Jesus said in the Bible. You, you, you are a believer and you know that you cannot uh, explain many things only based on, on knowledge. I have experienced. Can you base it on the Bible? Yeah. Good. So yeah. I'm basing it on the Bible. Yes. The Bible, according to you the Bible. You are based on Quran. No, no, the Bible. I'll give you the passage. Maybe you don't wait, read wait. the Bible very often. John, wait, okay. wait. Have you seen any... Hold on, hold on. I'm telling you why the Bible. I'll, I'll give you that. that I'll give you God evidence from the Bible. Okay? Anyone. I'll give you evidence from the Bible. You said it's the yeah. Quran. I'll give you evidence from the Bible, not the okay. Quran. Have you read the Bible? Yes. Good. You got a Bible on you? No. How come? I'm a teacher. Okay, good. And I went with my group. Will you, will you trust me if I narrate a passage from the Bible? Have you got the internet on you? What is your aim? My aim is to show you that Jesus worshipped and yeah. prayed to one person and not three persons. So you want you to Christians, you Christians, when I say you, those people who are Trinitarians, yeah. like yourself, they go against the practice of Jesus Christ. So when you say, I love Jesus, you're not really loving him in his practice. You're going based on emotions, what based Jesus on what other people told you. What did Jesus do on earth? He prayed to God. Yes, what else? No, but you first... What else? What else? He, he based, look, his message wasn't very different from the yeah. previous prophets. What so all the, all the previous prophets, for example, love your neighbor. Yeah? yeah. Who said that first? You read your Bible, right? Yes. But who who written, said it first? It is written in the Old Testament. Exactly. God and, and, gave and, the rules. And who got that law in the Old Testament? Who gave God? Moses. Moses yes. received the yes. message. Moses. So yes. most of the laws that you believe in mm -hmm. are actually what Jesus practiced. And what Jesus practiced came from the law of Moses. Yes, but he fulfilled it. Because uh, in the Old Testament it is written, eye for the eye. And Jesus said, love your enemies. Okay. What do you do with your enemies? Do you love your enemies? Do you love Hitler? What happened? What happened? You went, I, you went quiet all of a sudden. I don't like him. No, but do you love him? In, as a person, yes. I know you don't like him. That's yeah, even worse than, that, that's even less than lo loving him. Yeah. Do you love him? As a Christian, yes. So you loved Hitler? Yes. Are you sure? I wouldn't. I but you just said you don't like him. How do can you, you love mean? someone you don't like? You can, I don't understand. You can. Do you love uh, your uh, someone from your family, uh, even though you sometimes didn't uh, like his behavior or her behavior? Yes. But you still love them. But Hitler is not equal to someone in my family. He killed more than millions of yes, people. I know. Okay. Now, if you're going to love, what does God say in the Bible? You know, what does it mean to love someone, in you your know, opinion? I, I think you need to understand the question because you seem to be always rushing things. In the Bible, you know, in Psalm, wait, 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 in Psalm 5, Yes, uh, verse number six, five and six. God says he hates the wicked. Yeah. Okay, if God can hate, yeah, the wicked, yeah. not the wickedness only, yeah. he hates the wicked. Then who are, are you more, more merciful okay. than God? Listen, but uh, Jesus came and said, love your enemies. I know, but and you have to take it in I context. You can't just... I, I wouldn't kill Hitler. I would pray for him. But do you, would you love him? You when you see, wait, wait, when you see him gassing, do you believe that? Wait, wait, when you see him, when you see Hitler gassing innocent people to death, you're going to stand in front of him and say, Hitler, I love you. Is that do what you're going to do? I believe that Jesus died for Hitler as well. I believe that God. But, gave but now you're changing, you're changing, you're changing, you're changing the question now. Also for you and you're, you're changing the question. The question is this. When you Jesus, know? when Jesus during his second coming, will he kill his enemies or will he love them? You know? No, no, answer the question. You're always ignoring it. When Jesus, during the second coming. He isn't coming here to kill his enemies. He is, according to your Bible. You haven't read the Bible, have you? Yes, I don't think I you have. I you only to answer your question. Which way? Yeah, yeah. Because I think that you 
I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm taking you back to the Bible. Listen. Every time I gave you a reference from the Bible, you ignored it. Why? Listen. Because you're based your religion on emotion, not the Bible, yeah. not the Word of God. Okay? Have you experienced God personally? Of course, every single day. How? How? We pray to Him five times a day. Okay. Our religion says, religion? look, you ask me a question, allow me to answer. Okay. okay? Every day when we pray to God, we don't need a middleman. Okay, we don't need Jesus, we don't need Mary, we don't need even Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We can connect to God directly. Me too. You ask me a question, let me answer. Okay. Please. Okay. okay, with all due respect. So when we pray to God, okay, we don't need someone to die for us in order for us to be forgiven. Unlike, unlike Christianity, where you cannot be forgiven without the spilling the blood of an innocent man, our God is merciful and loving. This is the true love. Okay, I think if you want to, look, if you want to base it on emotions, that's up to you. But okay. Christianity today has become a religion of Jesus, about Jesus, rather yeah. than about God yes, Almighty. Because my God is merciful and he sacrificed his son. How is that merciful? His, how is that merciful? Okay, how is that merciful to sacrifice an innocent man? Because the only way that sin can be forgiven is through uh, blood. Ah, see? Blood. In Islam, okay. our God fine. doesn't need blood. That's fine, emotion, that's fine. No, no, it's, it's okay. If she wants to base it on emotions, she can. But you see, that is the that is reason that when you base your religion on emotions, not on your scripture, then the whole purpose of Jesus' mission is really useless, isn't it? Why did he come to this earth if you're going to just base it on emotions? Because today's secularism and liberalism has made Christianity into an emotional faith. Emotional religion. Uh, they very, feel, they feel, yeah, yeah, they feel attacked when we ask them pertinent questions about the love and the mercy of God Almighty. Forgiveness does not need any blood. Forgiveness does not need the torture of an innocent man on a cross. This is, according to them, a planned torture because they say God planned this for his son to come down as a man and then to be tortured and killed so that he can pay the sins of all pay for the sins of the whole world. We say, why? Why is God not able to forgive? Not able to show you his mercy and love? And this is the justice of God Almighty. To be able to forgive you, yes, by his mercy and by his love. But that doesn't mean that God always just forgives only. God is able to punish as well. This is something that God Almighty is capable of doing. By his mercy, by his wisdom, by his love, by his justice. To be able to forgive someone if he wants to and to be able to punish someone if he wants to. There is no third person who is going to pay for your sins. This is illogical, unjust and irrational as well. Because for you to believe that the only way you can be forgiven is by the spilling of blood. This is something from the barbarians. They believed in revenge and uh, extracting blood from their enemies. You know, on one hand, they say, love your enemy. And on the other hand, they say, kill the son of God. The only way for forgiveness. This just shows this false dichotomy that they have built in order to show us the love and the mercy of God. Alhamdulillah ala ni'mat al-Islam. That alhamdulillah in Islam, we don't have this injustice, this uh, bloodthirsty uh, doctrine where it says the only way you can be forgiven is by the blood of an innocent man. Yes? So Alhamdulillah Ala Nehmed Al-Islam, Jazakallah.